Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for, for inviting me. I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to have the opportunity to, to talk about my favourite subject. Um, just to, yeah, uh, my, my name is uh, Stuart Ayres. I'm currently Senior Deputy Head at Middleton College uh, over in Denby, which, uh, as we'll come back to later, was founded for a very particular purpose. Uh, and and uh, uh, we wished to, to challenge the way in which education took place uh, through the use of technology, really. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that um, in a little while. <clears throat> I haven't always been a teacher. I've taught for 15 years, and uh, you probably tell I, I'm older than that, right? So it's not my first career. It's my third career teaching. Um, I started uh, my, my uh, I started life as an exploration geologist, looking for uh, gold and oil. Um, and I looked for gold, and uh, after a couple of years, the price of, of gold collapsed, and I looked for oil. And after a few years, the price of oil collapsed, and I thought, hmm, <laughs> there's a pattern here, <laughs> so to avoid. And, and uh, I became an IT consultant. I've been working offshore uh, on oil rigs uh, using the big Unix systems that they use for tracking the progress of, of, of drilling. And um, I, I found them interesting. Uh, I, I, it was 1999. I, I thought it'd be a very interesting field to move into, uh, technology, just before the bubble uh, burst in 2000. Um, so, so, um, but I was an IT consultant uh, working in the southeast, uh, writing code for people like British Gas. Um, and after a little while, moved up to to, uh, to North Wales and found myself becoming a teacher. There's a, there's an extra story there, but I found myself becoming a teacher. I uh, didn't wasn't, wasn't I didn't think that would happen, but um, I fell in love with, with with the whole process of practice, um, having already done some other things. And what I found was. That remarkably little had changed, actually, in the field that, that, that I was new to, in the field of education, in terms of, of the way that the process worked, the, the way in which children were educated, uh, and the technology that I found around me. And I thought about um, all the other uh, aspects of life in which technology has changed the way we do things very, very dramatically indeed. It, it, it's an it's a oft-told story uh, that the current education system is, 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 is largely based on, on a system of education which was de developed in, in the, in the mid-1800s. So in, in the, in the mid-1800s, the army looked a little bit like this. Uh, the uh, medicine looked a little bit like this. Um, the factories looked a little bit like that, although that's taken with, 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 with the camera. Uh, and uh, classrooms looked a, a, a little bit like this. So uh, this, I work at Middleton College. Middleton College was built in uh, 1859. Uh, uh, almost contemporary to, to most of these uh, photographs. And what I found fascinating was, was, uh, was the fabric of Middleton College was designed um, if, uh, like this, right? It, it kind of looks like this. You, you've got desks, you've got somebody standing at the front imparting knowledge to people that sat in rows behind them. Uh, every other aspect of, of almost everything we do has been dramatically changed uh, by, by, uh, by technology. And what I found uh, re-entering education after years of doing other things was that it kind of hadn't changed that much, actually. The board color had changed dramatically, 100%. It was completely different. Everything else was, 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 was not that much different. So soldiery um, had, uh, had changed from red coats to looking a little bit like this. You can't see these guys. They've got magic eyes. They've got technology everywhere. They've got things flying over them. It's, it's, a, it's a totally 1,000% different world to, 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 the, to the one uh, of 150 years or so before. Medicine, thank goodness. Goodness, uh, looks looks a little bit more like this, a far more sophisticated uh, and, and and you know nuanced um, uh, thing. Thanks to all the technology that, that that's found its way in, into in, into medicine over the years. Factories, uh, you're less likely to lose bits of yourself on the factory floor, and more likely to have a robot do it for you. Uh, so so factories uh, look look just like that. Schools. Well, the kind of much actually. <laughs> we arrange the children in, in, in rows and we put something at the front and somebody like me does something like this. <laughs> Explain things to you. And then at the end of it, the children get up and they go, they go to the next room, right? They go to, to the next, uh, which, which is highly specialized. Uh, and they sit down again, breaking their train of thought from, 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 the, from, from where they were just a, a, a moment ago. They've had an hour of one, one, one realm. Now they have an hour of another realm, unrelated to the previous one, <laughs> to sit down, and we wonder why they have short attention spans. I think it's fascinating, really, that we break their concentration every hour or so uh, to move them between uh, uh, one, one aspect of teaching to another. And when you think about what teaching actually is, it, it, I know it's really obvious, but, but you find yourself thinking about these things, don't you? What, what are we doing? This, this whole fabric of machinery, what, what are we actually trying to achieve? Um, you can boil it down, it's a lot of things, but you can boil it down to essentially, my job is really to explain to explain things to people, to explain things to people in ways that they will remember so that they can go on into the world and do stuff with that information. And that's our job. 
I mean, there's tons, obviously. Uh, I'm really in charge of pastoral care, so I know that, that, that there's, there's a world of expertise and understanding uh, about the way that you learn, about the way that children learn and interact. But largely, if you boil it down to just a sentence, it's, it's how you explain something to, to, to somebody in a way that they, they, can, they can do something with later on. And if you carry on with that kind of simplification idea, you can kind of boil the process down into, into kind of three main areas, uh, three main things and realms that you need uh, to use as a teacher. The first is that you need some kind of content. Right? You, you've got content to deliver to people. Um, you, you've, you've, uh, you, you've got to get that content across in the most efficient way possible. And, and when, when, when all this started back in the 1850s, the content was delivered by a stern-looking chap or a stern-looking lady uh, who knew everything. And their job was to know everything and then to tell everyone else all the things they knew. And then the job of the students was to write it down and then retain it somehow. And later they would be tested somehow. Technology did come along uh, and it changed aspects of this uh, over the next hundred years or so. Uh, so that in the 1950s, um, uh, knowledge and information came from other sources as well as just a person that knew everything. Uh, and and there, there were exercise uh, textbooks and exercise books uh, to, to, to write down all the things you were learning about in. And then you gathered them together and you learned them and you, you uh, revised. And then that over uh, into the 90s, a, a, a fabulous new invention, uh, the, the, the world's first web server switching on in 1990, um, gave us a new source of content, a new place to get content from, uh, and suddenly opened the world to the sum total of everything we've ever learned um, a, 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 and gave everyone access to it. An amazing innovation. But actually, the process of recording it didn't change all that much. We still use pens and paper and folders this time instead of exercise books, perhaps. Uh, but we haven't moved an awful long way, really, uh, with... Uh, except for, I suppose, the insert, but, but, but it's still like, a comparatively uh, you know, uh, similar process. Having developed that content, having got something to tell people, you've got to kind of deliver it. You've got, got, to, got, to, got to get it across. And, you, and we use tools to, 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 to get that information across to as many people as possible in, in the most efficient form uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to, to deliver to many, many different students. And the thing that I remember, I, I used to kind of be fascinated by uh, at school, was, uh, was these, right? I mean, the, I used to love those. <laughs> they're brilliant looking, uh, and uh, there's something kind of space age about it all. Uh, this, this information projected onto the wall. And um, I kind of felt a bit jealous of the teachers that got to like draw on, on, the, on the acetate sheets. And then there was a huge shift uh, through to the 1990s, where, where we did the same thing, but we used PowerPoint slides instead. So, so instead of having to write them on, on acetate sheets, you made a PowerPoint, and that, that formulated all your ideas, and then you projected them onto the wall, in much the same way as you had with a, a OHP. And then a little bit later, there, there was a, a fair bit of uh, expense and cost went into developing these things, actually, uh, which, which is a, a, a smart board. The smart board does a lot of other things the other things do. You, you can project content, your, your PowerPoint slides uh, onto it, but you can draw on it too, right? So they had these special pens or you could use your finger or something. So it's a bit like a whiteboard and it was digital. So we replaced something that cost you know, five quid, <laughs> something that cost five, 500 quid or more, uh, which did much the same thing, <laughs> but uh, you could actually save the information as well. So, so it, it was a step forward, uh, and, uh, but it, the thing is, it required some training, right? There, there, there was actually, you couldn't just walk into a classroom and just figure it out. You, you needed to have a play before you, you attempted to use one of those in front of 30 uh, year eight children <laughs> that, that, uh, that, that, that uh, watch you every move. Once you've got your content and you, you've developed your content, and once you've delivered it to your students, and you're, you're hoping that they, they've, they've paid attention and they've followed all this, you've got to test them somehow to make sure that they understood. So you move on to uh, assessment. And uh, so assessment, you know, way back, uh, revolved around marking, right? Marking in the books. You, you open the book and, uh, and, and the teacher had to look through to see whether or not what the student had written down was correct. Uh, and then they maybe wrote some things in there to help them out or, or to correct them. Tick, 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 cross, cross, cross. You know, that's, that's good, that's wrong. Uh, and then in the 1970s, OMR came along and OMR w w was, 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 was clever. It was a clever idea. It automated some of this process um, with the knowledge that as a teacher, often you don't really, you know, terrible thing to say, often you don't necessarily care about the, the, the stuff that students have written down. You want to know if they understood you more than anything, that they might draw a picture or, 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 or write something or, or anything else, but you really want to know if they got you, if they, if they understood what you were trying to get across. 
OMR removed a step. It removed that kind of tediousness of going through stuff. But it did mean that you had to change the way you asked questions uh, so that they, they, were, they were boiled downable to these little bites that you could ask uh, just for a, a, a letter on. And actually, if you kind of look at marking the present day, it's, it's kind of the same, really. You, you, you open a book, you mark it. We've got different guidelines. We mark in different ways. Uh, but actually, the process isn't that dissimilar to, to, to the one that we've always used. Uh, you read through, and, and there is wisdom, and there, it is a necessary step. Uh, but nonetheless, it hasn't changed an awful lot. The, the, the methods of delivery haven't changed an awful lot uh, over the years, even with the march uh, of, of, uh, of, of technology. And what struck me about all this as a newcomer to the profession was, was that the, 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 media, the media was changing. The methods, the things that you had to, to, to get information across were changing. You know, we, we, we did have interactive stuff and there was more technology. The method, though, is kind of not evolving so much. It, it's, we're still using many of the same ideas and approaches that we've always used. Uh, I stand in front of a class, I march about, I bark, you know, I, 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 uh, I speak loudly, they write down what I'm saying, and, and hopefully they remember some of it a bit later on. Why? Why was it taking so long to make, for technology to make a significant impact on, on, on education? Why had it not changed all that much? Well, I think that there are probably uh, kind of four main barriers uh, to, to, uh, uh, to change. One is that you've got targets to meet. So, so, uh, so if, if you think about teaching as, 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 a, as a production cycle, you, you've got targets to meet. And you can't mess about with them. These, these are children's lives. You're not just making something which somebody may or may not buy. So you've got to get it right. And if you put somebody in a position where they've got to meet some targets and the targets really matter, they're not going to want to mess with what they're doing too much. Because if they do, it might have a dramatic, uh, uh, a dramatic uh, impact on the outcome. And the outcome is a child's life. So you've got to be really careful not to mess about with that too much. So not many teachers are game for a huge punt on some fancy new thing which may or may, ne may not um, achieve the best outcome for their children, which is the right instinct. You've also got this tight annual delivery model and you've got to get it right in one year, every year, reliably the next year, year after year. In fact, really you want to see improvement. No matter who you are, you've got to see improvement year after year. So you haven't got a lot of time, actually. If, if, you, if you think about it, you've got a new class coming in, uh, so uh, you, you, you've got to get them up to speed, you've got lots of information to impart to them. Think about an A-level class, plenty of volume of information. You haven't got a lot of time to, make it, to, 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 get those, to meet those targets. So again, you're unlikely to want a, a big, crazy punt on some new idea uh, just to see it fail, and you really regret it, and then you're being called in for a meeting with the head teacher. You've also got a very rigid infrastructure. We built schools in this way, in this model, with rooms like this and corridors to get to them. Uh, and you can't just change the walls. You can't move things around. You can't easily put new um, technology in without, without running cables through those walls. Middleton College, for example, um, was built in 1859. The walls are 19 feet thick. <laughs> They're all made of solid rock. Uh, Wi-Fi is challenged by, by, by a lot of the masonry and stonework uh, that you get in a place like that. It's a beautiful building. You, you can't just like, muck about with it to make it easier for yourself. So you've got, a, you've got an infrastructure designed to del deliver this product in a certain way, like oil, right, where you've got pipes and stuff going to petrol stations and you've got those pipes go all the way out to sea where there's a tanker and there's somewhere for a tanker to dock and on the other end you've got oil rigs pumping it out stick it in tankers right so you know what? you can't mess with that infrastructure um, with some some crazy alternative without a great deal of effort and expense and trouble and we've got the same problem with with with, 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 with education we've got an annual delivery model it's got it's tested every year you can't you can't have a break in it you know, we can never say, let's, let's take five years off to remodel this system. You can't do that because the children are coming through all the time. And your infrastructure is, is designed to, to meet the needs of that system. And then the final, uh, um, the final reason, the, the final barrier, um, you can guess what it is, right? Yeah, it's like, of course it is. It's expensive stuff, right? You're, 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 oh, this, is, this is expensive stuff, isn't it? It always was. Technology is always expensive. <clears throat> the average spend in the United Kingdom on technology per school, so the average is 40 grand a year. So, so the average school spends about 40 grand a year on, 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 on technology, um, apparently. You know, in my schools I've worked at, we've never, we've never spent anything like 40 grand, except for on maybe, maybe services to look after it, on maintenance, uh, but not on new kit, definitely, just, just, on, just on looking after the kit you've already got. 
Um, and if you've got a budget of like two or three million, then, then that's kind of not, not really an awful lot that you're spending. It's a teacher, it's a salary uh, that you're spending on, on, on the new technology every year. And the reason is that you're, you're tight, your budgets are tight anyway. They're all, of course they are, for everyone, they're always tight. So, so again, if you're going to decide to, to increase the proportion uh, of, of spend on technology, then you better be sure it's going to work and not mess up all the other things. It's, it's, it's got to work first time. And you don't want to... Let's spend 20 grand this year and if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Next year, we get, it doesn't work that way. You've got to, it's got to work. You've got to be very, very sure. So, so everyone's very, very uh, you know, nervous uh, of, of change for good reason. So I started teaching in 2005. And <clears throat> in 2006, uh, I came across this amazing new piece of technology. Uh, and through it, you could see where this could go in a way that didn't cost that much and that would make a really big difference. The VLE, <laughs> the virtual learning environment. Uh, I was introduced, have you seen these before? Is, is anyone familiar with, with virtual learning environments? Yeah, okay. So do you know what this one's called? If I recognize this, if, if you've seen one there. So, so this, is, this is a Moodle, don't you remember Moodle? Yeah, it's, yes, <laughs> yes, it has changed a bit. And uh, it's, it's grown up in it, if you, pardon? I saw it a few years ago, I think it was very good. Yeah, you can theme it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. I should have got the uh, orange. Uh, yeah, uh, you could theme them, uh, and 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 we did with ours. It's it's called a virtual learning environment. It's it, it, it's a um, it's kind of web web two point zero thing where where um, where um, it allows teachers to add courses and content to their courses. And the nice thing about this particular one, Moodle, was it was open source. And because it was open source, lots of people wrote lots of add-ins and bits and bobs to, to extend its use uh, and functionality in exciting ways that, that whenever you updated it and forgot to back it up, you lost and then had to try <laughs> and work out what they were again. <laughs> uh, the good thing, the amazing thing about Moodle was it had some really innovative ideas that you could find. So for a start, um, so you set your, your course up and then you, all your children joined your course and you could see them in your course and you could set them little tasks and you can see how long it took them. So, so you got an idea of whether or not the children were, were looking at the thing that you set them. And that was, that's a breakthrough, right? And they, they also, they liked, they had a chat function and they could chat to each other. You could see what they were saying. <laughs> and you could tell them off afterwards <laughs> once you see what they were saying. Um, and you could set, set uh, little quizzes that kind of self-marked. It was pattern matching stuff. It wasn't that sophisticated. But nonetheless, that was, that was uh, for me, that was really good. You, you, I could set them a little task and say, do that. And they go, great, because it's Moodle. Brilliant. I'll chat to my friends and I'll, I'll have a go at that thing. I could see that they'd spent five minutes on it and they'd had a go and scored 4%. And I could you know, t -t -t tell them to, uh, to do it again. And they would. And then they started to challenge themselves because they wanted a better score. Uh, and, and they could because, because they could just log back on again and, and try it again. And so this for me, this was a huge improvement. It was open source. Didn't cost any money. You just had to find someone to host it. And it started to contain some aspects of, of what I think are, 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 are uh, you know, overcome some of those, those barriers to change. This doesn't change much of what you do at all. It's just an add-on, right? Uh, it, but it means there's an improvement. A child can't say, I didn't find that thing. I couldn't find that bit of paper that you gave me because it's there, right? You say, well, you log on. You can look at it on your phone and you can download that piece of information again. You can have another, another go at that quiz. Um, it, took, it took a while to, to, to make resources, but then it always does. Every time you got a new specification, you have to make all your new resources anyway. So it didn't seem like it too bad an overhead. Then over the last few years, uh, the big guns have really entered the game. <clears throat> so the, this, is, this, this is called, this is Google Classroom. Uh, I don't know if, you, if you've come across uh, Google Classroom. Before the... Sorry? Someone here was just telling me... Is that right? <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> so this is Google Classroom, which is like Google got hold of a VLE and Googled it, right? <laughs> so so it, it, it's, it's, that, they, it's quite clever. They've they pared down a lot of functionality. Uh, they made it very, very googly, you know. Um, uh, but it's got a lot of the same ideas. You, you, you make a course. You invite children to your course. Uh, you, can, you, can punt, you can punt out information to them. You can see how they're interacting with it. Um, but it's very, it's quite, it's Google, right? So, so, uh, so there's, you can't add a bunch of stuff to it. You can't just mess around with the background or anything like that. It's definitely Google's, it's Google's thing. But it, it, it's, it's, it's an impressive thing. And what they're doing, uh, you, you know that behind all that, they're gathering you know, trillions of gigabytes of data and they're going to do a lo load of stuff with that information, uh, whether you, you well, because you, you do like it, right? Because you suggest, so <laughs> you do, <laughs> you like it. Um, 
This is, this is Microsoft's kind of challenge, I suppose. I don't know which way around they came, but, but uh, uh, it, it's, it's uh, Office 365 has a, an educational aspect to it as well. And if you're a teacher, you can have an educational license, and that gives you lots of, uh, lots of add-ons which you wouldn't have otherwise. And some of them are utterly brilliant. Uh, this, 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 is, this is what, what we use. I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to demonstrate uh, at some stage. Um, this is what we use. Um, it's called Microsoft OneNote. It's one of the tools in a suite of, of, of uh, programs uh, they, they, they use. And you see that you can organize all your courses. So this is my uh, AS uh, Computer Science Notebook. You can organize all your courses and you can have uh, all the topics in your courses. And then you've got this kind of blank canvas. And, and the nice thing about the blank canvas is you can put anything on it. it, it it's, it's, it's an infinite canvas. You scroll in any direction. I can dump in a, 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 a movie. Uh, I, I can write on this live. and the students have all got access to the same OneNote, right? So as I'm writing in their device, they can see my writing appear. I can see what they're writing too, and I can annotate it. I can do it live. So while they're having a test, sometimes I'll, I'll go into where they're working, and I'll, go, and I'll, I'll just go, have a look at this, <laughs> just, just question mark. <laughs> uh, but I can interact with them live whilst they're doing other things. It doesn't matter where they are. They can be anywhere in the world, as long as, as, long as they have a fast enough to get a connection just to see what I'm doing. <clears throat> I can feed back in different ways. I can change the screen color. They can change the screen color. So, so, uh, so if, they, if they can't handle uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, black writing on white background, they can change it. They can add a grid to it. They can, they can personalize the look and feel of their working area. It's a huge breakthrough. It's got accessibility tools. They can, make it re they can make it read out to them. Um, so th th they, they can get it to show them uh, just, just the, the syllables and break them up for them. So there are huge advantages to, to, to children that, 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 that struggle with traditional methods of delivery by using a piece of software like this. What we're talking about methods of, de of, of delivery uh, like this, you can guess that if you're going to use stuff like this, everyone's got to have a method of, 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 of accessing uh, the web. And that's an expensive thing for them. And just looking back again, like I did before, uh, at the kind of progression of such things, uh, I think it's kind of fun to look back at, at, um, at changes that have made a big difference to, to the way in which we access um, the web at school. When I started teaching, uh, it's a very small school for, uh, for me, about 500 children, uh, and there's one computer, uh, computing class, one IT class, and had 15 computers in it. 15 computers, that was the whole school, right? So 15 computers, and they had to go up these creaky little stairs, and there was, there was this room with these 15 computers. And uh, for the children, it's a real treat, <laughs> coming into this room and using the computers. It's very exciting, because they had web access, it's really cool. Now they've all got you know, smartphones in the pockets and, and iPads everywhere. Uh, and you can see this beginning to change uh, in, 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 in the uh, 2000s with, with things like the eMac that tried to bring the cost of the technology down um, to make it more accessible to schools. This product was for Apple and it was specifically aimed at the education market. It was like an iMac but much, much cheaper. And then you saw uh, Asus deliver a, a, a similarly um, you know, bargain device, really. For, for, for a couple of hundred quid, uh, you, you could get an Asus EPC, um, which was a, like a netbook. You know? um, so some schools started to have a go at this and, and brought in like one-to-one -one schemes where every single child had a device like this uh, and they could access the web. But they were horrible. <laughs> I don't know if you remember these, but the, the keyboard was yay big and the, the, the keys came off. If you, if you give 2,000 of these out to, to a school of kids, 99% of them will lose the keys and stuff. <laughs> within a couple of weeks, they, they'll ping off. Uh, and suddenly they're, they're, they're actually a liability. They're, they're not really helping because the children are, oh, I won't do this and I can't do that. And, uh, it turns into a bit of a nightmare. And then something incredible happened in 2010. And uh, this guy launched this, 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 uh, this object, which really has transformed, I think, um, the, way we, the way that we can teach uh, um, by, by using uh, uh, still comparatively expensive, but nonetheless quite durable and long-lasting tablet-like device uh, to, to, uh, to, to deliver information. This is what, uh, where, where I am now. This is, this is what we, we insist that everybody has one of these. We don't buy them, they do. Uh, and then, then, then we, we log on to, uh, uh, into our system uh, and uh, they, they can interact in, in wonderful ways. A couple of years ago, um, I asked the students to make, um, to, to make a video uh, about what they, uh, the way in which they used OneNote in particular uh, to, to, to interact. And 
it was for, I think it was for a competition. I, 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 so I was saying to them, you know, g j just go and make a film that shows what we do, you know, and why you like it with, with one note. And they went off and they made this film. And I honestly gave them no input, right? They just went off and made this film. It's not a masterpiece, but it's kind of cool the way they showed what they like about it. So it's a couple of years old now, but you get the idea. So here we go. Uh, they, 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 they made the whole thing, it's lovely. specifically uh, to help teach children using modern 21st century workflows. And we believe that Microsoft OneNote is the perfect tool for this job, to really help children thrive in the 21st century. I know the production values aren't incredible, but they're, they're kids with, a, with the iPad, so you know, the sound and stuff like that. The, the scene I like the best is the one where they're walking down the corridor and all these children on their devices, and they are talking to each other. They're, 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 they're interacting, but they're on device. That honestly wasn't staged. They really did just go down the corridor just before a lesson started, and it turned out that they were all, you know, like about to go in. So, so, so they were looking at the lesson uh, and they're starting to interact with it, something that we, that, that we insist uh, on, on them doing. So, I was thinking about, that's, where, that's how we, we came to get where we were, I suppose, to, to where we are. And in my career, in, in 15 years, I, I've seen some really massive changes. Uh, and I think going from a place where we have 15 computers in, in, in a classroom to a place where we've all got these devices which didn't exist uh, 15 years ago, and the students are using them to interact in such a fluid way uh, with, with us, and we're able to interact with them in real time and correct their mistakes not long after they've made them, right? So that's, that's the main thing. You're, you're, you're trying to make sure that a misunderstanding doesn't last long, that, that, that you manage to, to, to correct a child before they had a chance to embed that, that, that misunderstanding. So, so what's coming up now? Where, where are we about to go? What's just, just coming onto the market now? I mean, think about this. So, so, um, so just talk about those, those three areas, the, 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 uh, the content and delivery and stuff. And you, first of all, I think that you're starting to see um, Content gathered from different sources in a much more kind of live uh, and interactive way. You, you, we're starting to see um, AI uh, creep into just normal life every day, and the students think nothing of it. It's completely normal for them to get up and ask something, a question. Uh, how do you spell this? How far is it to this? Where is whatever? My children do it all the time. They'll walk in like, Alexa, what's this and that? They, they don't even think about it. It's just a normal part of their, 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 their day. And for them, it's just frustrating. It doesn't do more yet. And they're seeing new features come along. So if you can ask some, like this disembodied voice a question in the room, and you can, you can interact in a fluid way with, 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 with a kind of super duper virtual learning environment that, you, that your teacher is on the other end of, they're not far away interacting with you, then imagine how much faster children can, can learn. Imagine how much more embedded in their learning they can get. Uh, if you can go into a room and ask it a question, the room answers your question. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? And then you lift up this thing, it doesn't boot up or anything. You, you write, you're, you're, you're instantly interacting um, with, with a lesson. The way we like to teach is 
We set the children a prior learning activity. It's only a maybe five, 10 minute thing uh, per night. And it means that when they come into your classroom the next day, they're already a bit gemmed up on the lesson. For me, it's usually watch a, watch a video, a, a YouTube clip. Maybe it's only 10 minutes long, but it means that they're already introduced to some of the ideas that I'm gonna be discussing. So it cuts down the time that I need to explain, right, today, guys, we're gonna do this. They, they've also got something called a do now. The do now means that as soon as they come in, they just sit down and do the do now, right? So, so, so uh, 15 minutes into the lesson, we're already well underway. There's not, not a, a kind of big lead time in explanation and making sure everything's settled. They were settled, they did the do now. It was related to what they did yesterday. The, 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 uh, the prior learning activity is related to, to now, what they're about to learn. So, so it's, it's rapid uh, workflow. What about delivery then? What, 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 so we've got overhead projectors and projectors and then smart boards, bit by projectors. What's next? What do you think is next? How do you think the students will interact with, with, with things we're trying to show them? The so, so yeah, they've got the devices. We, we can send information directly to their device. And beyond that, beyond just the flat screen, the, the one that they hold in their hand, which is already a more personal thing than, than, than something you sit in front of with a keyboard, you start to see these things come along. So, so, and you're starting to see interaction with, 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 uh, with mixed reality offerings already. And I think this is, this is, this is crazy. I mean, you, you, you'll see some, some, of the, some of the videos that describe uh, you know, and show how mixed reality is going to be used in future. It, it, it's going to give you opportunities uh, to, to show students um, uh, introduce uh, students to, 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 uh, to concepts that, that are quite hard to explain otherwise. So um, one of the most effective uh, applications for, for, for this I've, be, uh, I've seen so far um, is, is like um, making compounds, you know, uh, get, getting atoms and things together, actually making things. I think it's really cool, isn't it? They can do that. They can uh, grab, uh, gra grab atoms and stick them together and see what happens. And then what about for assessment? Well, Assessment um, is moving from, from marking and knowing what the student um, has done wrong and be able to say, well, you know, do it this way instead, into a much more kind of dynamic and, and, and real-time experience, uh, using um, systems that give you a load of nuanced information to, 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 to understand uh, exactly where the students are going wrong, or whether or not what they're going wrong on here is related to something else that they don't understand over there. And given that Teachers are often interacting with large numbers of students and don't have lots of time to, 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 to spend on, 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 on one single student. It's more about trends and more about um, analysis of data. And you're starting to see uh, this particular clip is from a piece of technology that came across uh, just, a, just a couple of months ago called Century. Um, and Century is, a, is an AI-assisted um, uh, system where, where uh, the student logs on, uh, they sit some tests, uh, Sentry uh, goes, oh, you've got some gaps in knowledge here and here. Here are some things for you to learn. Them. And then the students go through the little process. And then at the end of it, it, it kind of it marks them again. And then it shows the teacher, well, they're weak on this, and they're strong on this. You know, so actually, it, it's, it's helping us with some more information. It doesn't relieve you of, of, of the requirement or the need or responsibility to look at the work. It just gives you another tool to, to help you understand where they're going wrong and to help to accelerate their, their, uh, their learning. Uh, I've got a, a, uh, a link to a YouTube film. I, I just want to show you uh, this, this, this very, very quickly uh, about, oops, uh, let's spoil the last one. Um, can I do that? Do you know what, I'll load up in a minute. That's fine. <laughs> um, so this is, this is about the HoloLens uh, and, and about what the ways in, in which um, um, you know, teachers are beginning to use HoloLens uh, to interact uh, with their environments. So that's kind of where we're at kind of now. And where we're we going over what I reckon would be the next 15 years. I think that in 15 years' time, in many ways, we probably won't have moved on an awful lot. I'm surprised in the last 15 years, we're still in the same rooms. You know, we're still in the same buildings. We're not going to lock them all down, are we, in 15 years and make, make brand new schools. But you are going to see uh, significant changes uh, in the ways in which we, we, uh, we interact uh, with, with, with students. And I reckon you're looking at these kind of four main areas. I think that AI is going to come into what we do much more, much more powerfully over the next uh, 15 years. And in fact, I think in the next 10 years, five to 10 years, you're going to start to see a lot more AI intervention and, 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 uh, and assisted marking systems. And, and, and uh, not only assisted marking systems, but systems that show you where the issues are, what, 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 uh, what students are lacking that they need to bring in as well. 
you're going to have much more of that kind of AI assistance in the classroom as well. Um, we have it in our homes now. We don't think much of it. it, it it's a quite a rudimentary uh, phase in its existence, but we don't think much of, of going home and asking Alexa to, to tell us uh, who, who won the football match this afternoon or, 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 or uh, when the Battle of Waterloo was or anything, uh, which you can just uh, you know, give us the answer to straight away. And I think that you're going to have AI assistance in classrooms because they're useful. And actually, I've seen, um, I've seen a great application for this that you're starting to see in places like Bolton College where they have their own version, right? So their own, uh, their, their own kind of bot that you can ask questions of. Um, so you can say, you know, uh, Alexa, what classes do I have tomorrow? Uh, Alexa, when, what day is sports day on? Which is kind of useful stuff to be able to do. But what's more, for teachers, they can ask, they can ask the, the, uh, Alexa um, as if it's another person in the meeting. How many of the year eights are on free school meals? You know, stuff which is, they can look up, of course they can, but they can just ask it too in the middle of a conversation. You don't want to break a conversation to go, and, wait, wait a second, I'll just look this up. It's better if you can just ask something the question. And so you're going to see much more of, of the applications of, of AI to, make, uh, to, to give you a useful assistant in your class. Um, Augmented reality uh, and, and virtual reality are, 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 of course, going to, going to come into play in the classroom. Um, they are, but only once the content is there. The big barrier to, to, to getting a mixed reality into classrooms is content. There's just not enough of it yet. And the systems are still, they're kind of expensive, and, and they're, they're, they're one of those punts that we said about. So if you want to spend 15 grand on a class set of, of AR goggles, you, you can. And then when you get them, you, you haven't got all that much content uh, to, to use. And if you're going to spend that much money, you need it to be able to deliver a whole load of lessons to a whole load of kids really, really quickly. And you can't have teachers go home and try and make something in, in, a, in, a, in a 3D environment that's going to help with the kids. It, it, you, we need the content. So this is an area of growth. Uh, we're going to need quality content to deliver to children through mixed reality settings. And then fi finally, I think that even now, with current uh, concerns about things like coronavirus, you're seeing schools saying, well, what if we have to shut? Like, what if we can't be open for a bit? Like, how, how are we going to teach kids everything? Now, you've got lots of material online, but a lot of children struggle with that. You know, they, 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 they struggle with it. If you just say, go and find out about that thing. You know, there, there, there are a lot of children, where do we even start? They're, they, they're good at going online, but not to do what you ask them to do. <laughs> they're good at going online to TikTok for three quarters of an hour or whatever, uh, but not necessarily to, 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 to look up the right things. I think that you're going to see a lot more kind of virtual classrooms where you can incorporate um, students who can't get in that day or can't get in at all, or, or, or even there. They're not even in the same town or country as you. Um, and with these all mixed together, you can imagine that actually, uh, in 10 years' time, you're going to see enormous differences in the way that some teachers are teaching. Uh, a, lo a lot of the, 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 the practice of education uh, may not change that much, but these things will creep in uh, more and more over the, over the next 15 years. And probably in 15 years, there'll be somebody standing in front of you saying, well, 15 years ago, we didn't have <laughs> this thing in their classroom, we didn't have these things on, and now we do. And what I hope is, uh, for me, Education is the most important thing we do. Educating children is the most important thing we do. If we don't get it right, we pay. We, we pay in all kinds of social ways, in all, all, all kinds of ways we don't even know we paid. Uh, it's just that the children didn't know things that they should have known. And if we're going to spend all this money, we've got to get it right. So for me, the most important thing over the next 15 years is that we're careful about the tech we use and we use quality te uh, technology uh, for quality results in the classrooms. And that's what I want to share with you today. So uh, now I've fired a bunch of stuff at you. Um, I thought it might be nice if you've got any questions uh, for us to chat about what I just said. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.